Welcome back to the Halftime Report. Time now for our calls of the day. First up, Bank of America downgrading Archer Daniels and Bungie to neutral as the firm cautions both companies could be nearing peak earnings. They acknowledge the huge run in the stocks, raising the price target, but still downgrading them. Um, Dr. J, you own a number of names in this space. I do, Mel. And the reason is quite simple, and that's the uh, sanctions against Russia, as well as, of course, uh, inability to get things out of Ukraine, uh, the breadbasket of Europe. So I think food prices continue to go higher. I'm not saying they're wrong for taking some money off the table, Mel. I've been in, uh, you know, it's up 97 percent. Mosaic is up 97 percent year to date. Um, so are you dumb to take money off the table? No. But these sanctions and the damage done to the infrastructure of Ukraine will mean that um, this is extending out years into the future. This isn't a fix that happens um, with the passing of just a couple weeks or a couple months, Mel. So I would continue to own those, just like I would continue to own coal names, like Peabody Energy, BTU, like Patterson Energy, PTEN, like the oil and gas names, because again, all of this is going to continue to play out for years. This will be much higher prices for a long time, sadly, Mel. Yeah, um, Halliburton's earnings this morning, uh, Steph, gave us a good glimpse into uh, this industry and also the tight supply chain found across, um, across sort of the scale of, of oil in North America. Yeah, yeah an very island slumber, it's, like, it's sorry. like a, oh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Sorry, John. Um, uh, yeah, so I own Schlumberger. I, I, I call it my hidden technology play because they have technology that helps their customers become more productive uh, and more efficient and helps their margins. So both parties win. Um, and so I wasn't surprised to see Halliburton do well today. I expect Schlumberger to do very well on Friday when they report as well. It is one of my larger energy positions. In ag, I own Corteva. It's the number one player in ag. And they have a new CEO, fairly new CEO, who's focused on growth, new products, and and margin improvement. And for those of us that have owned Honeywell in the past, you'll remember the CFO at Honeywell for 11 years was Dave Anderson. He was brilliant. He is now the CFO at Corteva. Um, I just like the innovative culture and I like the valuation, even though it's up 30 percent. That's my play on the ag side. By the way, Corteva, new high in today's session. Let's move on to Meta. Meantime, getting a price target cut from JMP Securities ahead of its earnings next week. We heard Steph already talk about adding to her position. Jason, how are you feeling about Meta? Yeah, so Meta, I, I sold actually a couple months ago. I mean, that was big for for me. Just the iOS changes uh, that Apple made. You know, so I decided to unload the position. You know what? I, th I think it's going to take some time. It's a show me story here. Obviously, the name is, has grown tremendously since the IPO. But um, I, I think and, and also to the the investment that they've made into the metaverse and kind of see how that plays out. So for me, um, it, it, it's, it's not a position I own currently, potentially look at something down the road, you know, as far as entering back in. But it's, it's not something we own right now. All right, moving on to Lulu, upgraded uh, to a buy over at Truist, the firm raising its price target on the stock to $495. Uh, John, you own calls, is that right? I do, Mel. And, uh, you know, this is one that, uh, you know, knock on wood, Courtney Gibson really um, uh, got me into it, and I haven't wanted to get out of it. And that's the same story, Mel, with people that buy. Uh, their clothing, whether it's men or women, um, they love the the feel of the clothing, the production quality of the clothing. Uh, so I, I think this is one you do hold on to, despite the fact that uh, you know they're they've done as well as they've done. I don't see the competition really out there. I mean, yeah, they have lower price brands, even from big producers like Nike or Gap stores through. Um, their various uh, Lulu competitors. I just don't see people migrating or being at nearly as loyal to those brands as they are to Lulu, Mel.